Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Kasi again with Let's Show Network. And in the previous video, we have discussed about uh, what is call filtering in unified communication. How, how can we do it with uh, matching the A and I. And also we discussed about the different methods that can be utilized to do the call filtering in unified communication. In this video, I'm going to take a quick moment to review those methods. And also I want to um, emphasize about the SIP normalization script. It's not really a different method to do call filtering, but there is a small caveat when it when we use the second method, and also when we utilize the second method, which is which is called route to the next stop based on the calling party number, and and when we use that along with the SIP trunk, um, it's going to um, the, the calls are going to fail. Let me let me take a quick moment to explain that, and also in this video. Uh, we will discuss about how, discuss about the configuration flow of each and every uh, method that we discussed in the last video. So with that said, let me quickly navigate over to the slides. So this is what we discussed yesterday about how we can uh, do the call filtering in iOS voice gateway using the translation profiles and rules. And the second method that we discussed is using route to the next stop by calling party number, uh, which will work on UCM 8.0 and above. And uh, let me talk about the, the configuration steps that are involved. So when we get to the second method, I'll explain about what's the caveat with the second method and how we can fix that using the SIP normalization script. Okay. So using voice translation rules what are the configuration steps that are involved to do the call filtering in iVoice voice gateway first basically we have to define we have to define the translation rules set sorry we have to define the translation rule set and then it's it's like a normal rule whereas in the case of normal voice translation sorry whereas in the case of uh, voice translation rule what we do is we create a rule set and we we'll create a rule one with the matching statement and then we'll create a um, replacement statement but whereas in the case of call filtering what we are going to do is we are going to say that the rule one is going to reject the call and it's going to match the whatever number that we specified here. It can be a number or it can be a mix and match of number and a wildcard mask. And then we are going to create a voice translation profile called blog. And we are saying that translate the rule set 99 based on the calling party number which is a and i okay so what we are doing next is we are going inside the dial pair uh, this is my inbound dial pair in my lab router which is going to receive the call from the pstn so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply this translation profile called block as a call block translation profile the translation profile name is block and it's going to block those calls as 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 soon as it's comes to the router that's inbound call it all the incoming message all the incoming calls are going to be screened by the translation profile called block and it's going to use the rule set which is 99 and it's going to look at the ANI and if any of the ANI matches this number it's going to be blocked it's pretty simple right yep and once we finish the uh, explanation of all the different methods we will uh, go into the actual router and I'll show you how to configure this and we'll, we'll test this in action okay let me navigate to the next slide 
uh, which is using the second method called route next route to the next stop by calling party number, uh, which utilizes a CUCM. So let's say that there is an inbound call from the PSTN and you want to block those calls. Uh, let's say it's a history to the gateway. It sends a signaling over to the call manager. And this is basically a history to three gateway inside the call manager. And we have configured the inbound CSS, uh, which should have the visibility to the, the dialed number so that it can send the call out to the next uh, endpoint or entity. So what we have done, what we are going to do is we are going to create a translation pattern called bang it's going to be a simple exclamation it matches any number it can be any number and it's going to going to be in the partition called partition it's going to be applied for translation pattern for PSTN inbound call through gateway so as the as the call comes into the gateway it's going to look up the CSS and it has this partition and it's going to look at the look at the some kind of pattern which has this partition assigned and we have this translation pattern bang with this partition assigned so what does gateway do is gateway send the call out to the translation pattern now what we have done is we have set the translation pattern to route the call and also we have set the translation pattern to route to the next hop by calling party number. So what does it say is process this call, route this pattern, but when you send the call out to the next hop, it asking the digit analysis engine to look at the ANI. If any pattern matches next, it should match the ANI of the call, right? So what is, let's say, uh, sample calls comes in, Let's say there is a call from 800-553-2447 and it's coming for 2001. Let's say it's an internally it's four digit number. Let's say provider is stripping off the first six digits and sending uh, the last four digits um, to our customer network. So the calling party number is 800-553-2447. So what it's going to happen is, as we discussed, it's going to hit the translation pattern. It's going to um, go through those lists and we are saying route the pattern and route to the next stop. But when the next hop processes the call, it's need to look at the ANI of the call, right? So, and we have assigned the CSS and it's, it's going to have these two partitions. So next it's going to the next hop which is going to be uh, another translation pattern that we define. So what we have done is we have created a translation pattern and we explicitly specify the ANI of the number that we actually received on the on our call. So we, are, we want to uh, block this toll free number that is being received, okay? Let me take a different color. So, so once this translation pattern process the call, it's going to send and it's going to match this translation pattern. Even though the DNIS is 2001, it's go and matches this translation pattern. Because of the reason we have set the route to the next stop based on the calling party number. That means a digit analysis is look, looking for the pattern which matches the ANA of the call. And it, and it definitely it matches this. And what we are saying is, and also it matches the partition that that is part of the CSS which is this so it is kind of routable and then what we are saying is block this pattern that means this call will be dropped you understand right so if any other call let's say um, uh, 408 202 22 is the ANI of the call 
when it comes through the translation pattern, it's going to match the DNIS here, and and it's going to route the call to the next stop. But when it gets to the next stop, it's going to look at the calling party number. So when it comes here, is it going to match this pattern, which is here? Nope, because it's the N. It should match specific. The N should specifically match this number. But in our case, the ANA is this for the second call. So it can match this pattern because it says just bang. That means any number of digits, any digits. So it's going to match and it says route this pattern. And then based on the CSS that we have assigned here in this translation pattern, it's going to send the call out to the um, probably a phone or probably a different, um, maybe a CTI or maybe a, any kind of endpoint that, that's, that the CSS assigned to the translation pattern can reach. So this is the second method. Um, there is a caveat with this method as I said. So what's the caveat is, let's look at the next slide so that you can better understand. So let's say uh, instead of SV23, let's say we are using SIPs. As I said earlier, it, it, this method works for all the three different protocols like SIP, SV23 and MCCP. But when it comes to SIP, there is a small limitations. Uh, it's basically a caveat with the SIP. Um, so what's happening is when we receive a call, let's say the let's talk about the same scenario. If we receive the ANA of this, it's going to match and it, it should be routable. But let's say uh, there are certain calls that can receive without without the without the numerical value as an ANA. Let's say we can receive a call and if you look at the SIP message, let's say invite the from header might say anonymous, right? This is not a numerical value. This is kind of non-numerical string so what we are doing here is the same method, it's going to, the CCM is going to send a call to the translation pattern, which is going to match the DNIS. Let's say again, the DNIS is 2001, and but the ANI is anonymous. It's a non-numerical string, but the DNIS would match, and we are going to route this pattern, and we are going to route the call to the next stop, and the next stop is going to look at the ANI, so now it comes to the next two translation patterns we have here. Does any of this translation pattern has the ANA of anonymous? Or is it possible for the administrator to define anonymous inside the translation pattern? No, we don't have this anonymous assigned and even it is not possible for the administrator to assign some non-numerical strings inside the translation pattern other than A, B, C, D. Right, so it's not possible here. And also it's not matching. So what does CUCM do is, CUCM fail the call and it's going to send a 404 not found message back to the cube. Okay, and we can certainly see this in debug. So this is a kind of caveat because as we are doing, as as we are asking the digit analysis engine to process the call based on the ANA, and the ANA is is a non-numerical string, it's not going to match any of this translation pattern, and it, it's going to fail. Hey, this is the caveat I was talking about. So how we can fix it? Let's take a look at the next slide. Um, we are still going to utilize the second method, but what we are doing is before we sending the call out to the translation pattern, right? As soon as we receive the call through the SIP trunk, let's say this is a SIP trunk that we configured in our CUCM, we are going to call the SIP normalization script or LUA script. Let me take a different pen. Okay, so we are going to call a LUA script inside the SIP trunk so that as soon as we receive the call, let's say the same scenario, the call, the number is 2001 and the ANI is, let's say, anonymous. 
what would happen is as soon as the SIP trunks here receive the call, it's going to utilize the SIP normalization script and it's going to convert this anonymous into some numerical value that we define inside the script. Okay, we have defined this as a numerical number. So what does the script do is, as soon as it matches the anonymous, it's going to convert it into this. So 10 digit numerical value. And then, so what is this? This is basically the new ANI after the conversion. So once we process the call, the translation pattern is going to match the DNIS and it's going to send the call out to the next level and the next entity which is going to match the ANI as we have set the route to the next row based on the calling party number the next entity which is going to look at the ANI so what's ANI we have we have the numerical value right now and the digit analysis engine is would be able to process this and also as an administrator we can define this number in our translation pattern because we cannot assign anonymous here but we can define a numerical any kind of numerical patterns here and we have called one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and it matches the new ANA that is being converted so we can block the call or let's say if it is a legitimate call uh, because of the caveat with this method what's happening is even when we receive some legitimate calls through the SIP trunk but if the ANI is a non-numerical value, it's going to it's going to stop those calls. It's going to simply reject those calls and send a 404 message back to the queue. So let's say like even even when we receive some legitimate calls through the SIP trunk, but if if it says anonymous or restricted or or it may be private or unknown. We still want to receive those calls because of this reason as CSCM cannot process the numerical digits, sorry, non-numerical string with the translation patterns, it's going to simply reject the call. So to avoid that, we can do this to convert those and send the call out to the next level. And certainly we can only have this pattern or we can allow if any call that comes from this end of this and we can route the call if it's a legitimate. Okay, great, good stuff. Um, so I have mainly recorded this video to, to explain the different configuration flow and the call flow that's involved uh, in different methods. And also wanted to talk about uh, the caveat that present in the second method using the uh, route based on the calling party number using CCM and uh, we can mitigate that with the help of uh, the SIP normalization script. I believe it was developed by uh, Cisco marketing engineer Dan Keller and in the next video when I sh show the demonstration of uh, these these methods and I'll share the sc uh, script and I'll also share the uh, support form URLs with you so that you can uh, take a look at the script yourself and uh, probably if you have any further questions um, we can probably discuss that more on that and with that said um, I'm going to uh, stop this video for now if you guys like this video just give it a thumbs up and share your comments below and thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.